Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be going over this Yamaha EF3000IS inverter generator on how to convert it from gasoline over to propane. You'll actually be able to use both fuel types in this. This is an awesome way to have lots of fuel stored that can run this generator for a long, long time and have a very clean fuel source that won't degrade over time like gasoline does. So stick around for this video. It's going to be a good one. I got this conversion kit from centryfuelproducts.com. It's a couple hundred dollars, but I feel that's definitely worth it because propane can be really beneficial for a gas generator because it allows it to run on a much cleaner fuel. But one of the biggest things is propane will last for years and years and years, whereas gasoline will only last up to about a year, depending on what you put in it. So it came with some padding on top here. You got this here, all of this, got some hoses. And generic inverter conversion kit instructions. Hopefully this works pretty good. They said it was pretty easy to do. We're gonna put that to the test. So I've got some generic tools here in my work closet. This thing weighs like 150 pounds or something like that. And that's without a few gallons of fuel in it. But it's nice because it has this little lock right here. Keeps it from moving around. But I keep this cardboard here because there's nothing worse than dropping a screw and having it go through one of these cracks on the ground. So I work on top of this to make sure nothing falls through. So the first thing you want to do is actually start taking apart the outer shell of the generator. Now I've actually already done this and I kept everything here in a little baggie. You just have to know there's one silver one that's up here that goes right up here as kind of a guide for the cap. And what I actually do is use this little adapter here. It goes on a number 10 socket. Put this on here. Put this on my trusty power tool. And this makes the work go a lot faster and making sure I get all these bolts off real easy. Okay, so this top part's a little bit tricky. You have to unscrew the gas cap. So just push the cap through with this rubber lid. It's very soft, more like a silicone. And you can put this right back on top, make sure nothing falls in. Now it's gonna take off. I don't know how much I need to take off, but there's just little panels and stuff. I can just pull right off. It is really nice that they use all the same size bolts. It looks like right here I do need a Phillips. So I've got it pretty much all opened up here. Got this big circular thing. I got that big pipey thing. I got that small circular thing. And then a box full of all sorts of trinkets and bolts and stuff. Keep in mind, I have never done a conversion like this before. Got a short hose, got a long hose with some brass threading. So right here on the first page, it gives me a little worried because I got a drill but I don't have a hole saw. I've got some wrenches, but I don't have a pipe wrench. I've got my racket set. I got Phillips and flathead. It tells me all the parts and stuff. A lot of these things are just what's in that little box. Use a marker to mark placements for top two mounting ears. The regulator has to be pointing up. Remove cover and drill holes on markings using a one quarter metal drill bit. So I need my sidewall back on. Take elbow fitting with power valve and screw on to top of regulator pointing in the direction of the adapter. Be sure to put pipe sealant thread on it. Well, just get off. Well, here's the pipe sealant I got from the box. Well, here's an elbow. It's got a barb side and a thread side. That's the right size. It just looks like the picture is different. This thread's on there. We got that thing sticking off to the side. This looks like a, something to adjust. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can put this together kind of roughly first. Ah, I've never done this! And it says screw together nipple and ball valve to desired direction and screw it into the regulator. Be sure to use pipe sealant. Ball valve must be on. Here's a ball valve. I know that much. Okay, so according to the diagram, we've got the thread. And we've got the angle piece, and we've got another angle piece that's connected to the elbow. And we've got another threaded piece, which has a big chunk kind of welded into it. You can see that there's a big chunk of metal stuck right there on the threads. There's my lucky bench made. That'll take care of that. Okay, so I've got that fit. And ball valve required. So I'm just going to put this kind of loosely together first. And this is supposed to go on the front of here. Got that. 
place regulator on generator removable panel. You may mount regulator anywhere within 19 inches of adapter. It is recommended that you mount it as close as possible. Okay, so this is the mounting kit for sure. Connect the fuel line to the adapter. Remove air cleaner box slash hose from carburetor so the carburetor looks like this. Well, I know this is the carburetor. See the carburetor's got these two bolts in here. And this is showing two bolts. Leave original gasket in place on carburetor studs. Find the right size of studs that are included in kit. Try screwing one stud on if it doesn't easily screw on, you have the wrong stud. Okay, so we gotta put this on here. I need to take off. This is the air filter. And housing. What I gotta do is get those nuts off right there. There's two of them in here. Seems like you just have to kind of break the Loctite seal or something on them. Once they got the first twist done, they came off real easy. And there's a hose down here that comes out. This pops off. Okay, so my gasket here actually has a little bit of a tear in it. So I got this Ultra Gray Advanced Formula Max Torque Gasket Maker. It's supposed to be corrosion resistant against fuel, work in high temperature. So it may be good to have a little bit of this on hand. So now we're going to do is take some of these extender pieces, thread them onto here. So you can see there's a coarse thread and a fine thread. I'm using the fine thread on here, so it only makes sense for it to go on like that. And then we take this housing and put it on there. But before I do that, I need to fix this gasket. So I'm going to take this gasket maker here and I'm going to kind of fill in where the gasket failed. Okay, so we got that on. Okay, so I put this housing. Now I need to put these bolt or these nuts right back in here. Reassemble air cleaner assembly. Connect fuel line to adapter and clamp it down using a hose clamp provided in the kit. Here I've got a hose clamp, and I'm assuming they mean this shorter black hose. And this is just a barb fitting. Put the hose clamp on here, put the hose over the barb fitting. Now it's nice and secure on there. Okay, so now it's saying we need to drill a hole into the front cover here, so I need to get that cover. Going back to the beginning here, because now it's time to get this mounted on here. So it is time to put all these things together. So now it's saying we got to put this onto here. I need to mark where that's going. Okay, so I re-drilled the holes here on the door. You can see here in the instructions, it's not very clear, but C is labeled as generator door. Make sure you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put these bolts back through, get this remounted. Okay, so now I've got this. Okay, so I got these bolts through here. I put one washer there. Then the ears. Then the crush washer. I'm just kind of pinching it right here until I can get this nut on. Okay, now with that, I want to tighten this down very gently. Now I gotta redo this hole to come out here so that way I can reach this. I had to redrill the hole. Now it looks like it's gonna fit properly, but I think this is supposed to go on this side and get a hose clamp. It definitely is not supposed to go on that side, so I gotta twist that. Okay, so the hose goes up top with the clamp. So get our other hose clamp here from the bag. There it goes. That one definitely took a little bit of muscle. That one was harder than I 
expected. Okay, we are nearly there. And it looks like this is what's gonna go inside of here. And then this will connect to this here hose. And then we need this brass fitting that goes here, which then adapts to this. So a lot of fittings here. Go ahead and put my goo onto this right here. Definitely helps to have a big pair of pliers. Okay, so that's now on there. Got this hose here. We take this, which has an O-ring on it, thread it into the internals here. Now, usually these are reverse thread, so it's lefty tidy, righty loosey, which is backwards. It's nice and secure. Not overly tightened, just taut. So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm going to be putting this uh, thread sealant stuff on everything except for this part, simply because I plan on keeping all of this connected and just disconnecting here on the tank because that makes the most sense because the tank's the only thing that needs to be swapped out. Okay. So what would make this a lot easier is if, is if I had just a set of wrenches rather than one of these tools. But in the end, this does work. Okay, looks like it should be good then. Not seeing any bubbles anywhere. Close this off for now. Because there's one thing uh, that came up that was a little bit difficult. And I'll, I'll put a picture up here, but you can see the hose here in this picture needs to be lengthened out. Uh, so I needed to get a longer hose. You can just usually get that at any auto mechanic store. That, that was the biggest thing was getting one long enough to fit all the way back inside that housing. So what I want to show you here is how to operate this with the propane tank. Now this is actually a three fuel type of conversion. You can use natural gas on this. I don't have natural gas, so we're just doing propane. But the process of events is open up this tank here and then open up this ball valve here. And then on the back of this big silver thing, there's a little button that you depress and that's the primer. And basically that allows enough propane to go through here and push the air out that's currently in here because this hasn't been running. And that makes sure that enough propane can get in to actually start this thing up. I'm gonna open this up, open the ball valve, and you'll hear that hissing a little bit. You can hear it actually coming out of the tank. Okay. And then because we're gonna be using propane and not the uh, gasoline that's on board here, we want to keep this in the off position, but we want to switch the on switch on. Uh, I have eco mode off right now. Pull the choke and give it a rip. So sometimes the pull start doesn't work immediately. This is because the propane has to get into the system. So you pull it a couple of times and then it goes right up. These uh, Yamaha generators start up really, really easy. I really like them. Now to turn it off, the best thing to do is actually just shut off the valve here and that way all the propane that's in the hose here gets used up in the system. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just close this up. And you'll start to hear it bog down pretty quickly. Just like that, it's done. Make sure the ball valve here gets shut off and it's good to go. I can now disconnect this, move this wherever I need to. This hose is a little bit of a hassle, but I'd rather keep it connected all the time. I just usually feed it through the handles here. Uh, I haven't put the housing back on yet, so that's what I'll do next. But so far, it's been working really, really well. One of the other important uh, valves here is this right here. Now, what this actually does is controls how much propane goes through. So what you do is you basically unscrew it uh, until it starts to bog down and it's not running smoothly, and then you keep screwing it back in until it's running smoothly. Then it's got this uh, nut on here that you can use to lock it into place, and that just makes sure it's always getting the proper amount of fuel. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that for you. I'm gonna get this started back up. So I'm just gonna screw this in and out, and you'll be able to hear it bogging down. It's bogging down. Pull it back out. Pull it out. The right where so I'm screwing it in starting to bog down, so I'm opening it back up, backing it out, running smooth. So that's where I want to put this little set screw. It 
So you just take a pair of pliers, tighten that down, and that gives you the proper amount of fuel going in. So we use this mostly up at the cabin, but one of the best things that a gas generator is used for is a backup to a solar generator. So this is actually our backup to our Titan solar generator. If you go and watch my other cabin video, you'll see that we actually use this to recharge the Titan in just a few hours. Now the advantage of that is let's say I needed to run for 24 hours. That would mean that this would have to be on and using fuel for 24 hours. But my Titan solar generator gives us about 48 hours of power up at our cabin. Anywhere from 48 to 72 hours depending on what we're using. And that's mostly because we've got three Titan batteries on it. So the role this would play is let's say it's been really, really cloudy. Like today is a really cloudy day. And so the panels weren't making much power. So we weren't able to recharge the batteries. So what we're able to do is crank this on and recharge the Titan in about four to six hours because we've got two wall chargers, which means that we would only use four to six hours of gas off of this in exchange to run for 48 hours or 24 hours or however long it is that the Titan will run our equipment. So using it in that fashion actually reduces our usage of fuel down to like 20% or even 10% of what it would be if we were just using this. So what that means is for something like an RV, we could still bring this with us and use our solar and everything, but if for some reason that we're just not making enough power from the solar panels, then we can crank this on and be running the RV or the cabin while recharging the Titan batteries, and that would allow us to save a lot of fuel. So one tank like this, would last us a long, long time rather than just a day or two. Now, the reason I went with an inverter generator is they're much more efficient and they're also very quiet. I'm hoping to do a video review on how to convert a Predator 3500 from Harbor Freight, as well as like the Honda 2000 and the Predator 2000. Those are really good inverter generators that I really like. The propane makes it so that way you don't have to worry about your fuel going bad, like the gasoline. But on top of that, it's just easier to transport. Because this is contained and it's not going to spill, then I don't have to worry about gasoline spilling everywhere in my RV. But the biggest thing is it's much, much cleaner. So it's going to make my generator last longer. These are also much easier to refill at gas stations when the power is out. Many gas stations just have big propane tanks that they can refill your small propane tanks with. And it's all a pressurized system, so there's no electronics running it. And so therefore, even when the grid's down, you can get propane out of it. If you're a little leery on actually doing this conversion to your Yamaha 3000, then I would recommend you look up a small engine mechanic in your area. Don't forget to click the like button. Uh, YouTube tries to suppress a lot of the type of information like preparedness and guns and stuff like that. And so pushing the like button helps the algorithm really understand that this is a video that people want to see. So please push the like button. Also, if you found this helpful, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Click the bell, that way you get notified of when I put out more content like this. If you've done other conversions to other systems, go ahead and comment down below. What systems have you guys been converting? I'd definitely like to do some more videos on these kind of conversions. If you're interested in getting any of this equipment, I'll have links down below. That way you can get the exact same stuff that I did so you can follow this video kind of like a tutorial. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you all next time.